Welcome everyone to a Tuesday edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, Rich Quinones. All right, last portion of the show, we'll continue to uh, dive into the NFL and the head coaching carousel playoffs right around the corner. Our guy, our NFL insider, Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us for a couple moments. Did you make it through Black Monday? Were you okay? Your, your job security <laughs> safe with you? Yeah, I'm doing okay. And it, it, so far, it's, it's been kind of slow, Q. You know, typically you have about seven coaches that uh, get their pink slips. And, and right now, uh, I think it's uh, only four openings out there. And, and uh, you know, we'll see how the cards fall. And obviously, the big names are out there. You know, Jim Harbaugh and, yep. and Sean um, Payton are the two biggest chips out there. And everybody seems to be t- want to talk to them first. Um, I'm not shocked that uh, Kingsbury is out. In Arizona, I, I think they made a major mistake with Kyler Murray. I think you're seeing it. Uh, the hens are coming home to roost, so to speak. That contract's ridiculous. That kid's not going to be ready to October, November, which means that that's a lost season, right? GM issues, we know that. Health, stepping down. Um, Hopkins now, once uh, they want him to get uh, move him or he wants to get out. I mean, I, I just think that's – that franchise is kind of going back to where they were years ago, and it's a rudderless ship. Um, you know, wh- how can that be fixed? And, and, and furthermore, where do you place the blame? Is it on the GM? Is it on the head coach? Or is it on the quarterback? Yeah, it, it, yeah they all have a piece in it. But I, I think that Steve Kayyem, who's the general manager there, he was, he was tasked by Michael Bidwell to guide his team and, and move them into their new stadium and, and – you know, they've done a great job in terms of building that palace out there in the desert. But uh, the team, as you were alluding to, they did, they've just underachieved. You know, last year they started out, they were the last undefeated team. Don't forget that. Everybody, they were the darlings of the league. Everybody thought they were going to get done. And then they kind of limp home. Um, I think they finished 11 and six, and then they're one and done in the playoffs. And, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, a guy who we all thought, okay, he wasn't even that great of a college coach. He couldn't even win with Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech, and, and then he gets the job with Arizona, and it's kind of handed to him after Steve Wilkes is only there one season. And, yes, he had that high-powered offense, but, you know, too often these college coaches, college game is easy. You know, we saw it last night. If Georgia, you can out-athlete anybody, you know, in college. And in the NFL, you have to put the work in, and you have to game plan and be prepared. So, Kingsbury, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I did talk with somebody over at NFL Films. They have that show now, the in-season show with them. And they told me, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago that he's probably going to be done. You could see he was wow. downtrodden. A lot of things that were left on a cutting room floor for that show. So, you know, I, I think Steve Kayyem, he decided to walk away. Um, but Kingsbury's still going to get paid. He has a, they gave him both extensions last year. Uh, I think they suppose they're still going to be paid for like three or four years. So, you know, they're going to look around. I, I think um, Vance Joseph, their defensive coordinator, is a guy that they possibly want to talk to. But uh, we'll wait and see. And, and I'm hearing Kyler, you know, he talked about that big contract. He's going to have some input in his next coach. Yeah. When, when did we get to that point? Like, honestly, what, when did we get to the point where – now we're now not only quarterbacks, but wide receivers have input. Running backs have input. Like when, when, when did it become, I want to know what you guys think. No, you're the player. Yeah. Shut up. You play. I pay you. I make the decisions. Like I, I just, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Q. And I, I think it has a lot to do with the franchise. You know, if the owner is a strong owner, like the Rooney family in Pittsburgh or, or Robert Kraft, you know, these guys are the mayors and with the giants that they're, this is their team. You know what I mean? And they're not going to listen to a player in terms of building it. And, you know, I think it has a lot to do with the modern game. You know, the, these kids are coddled all the way from high school, uh, the seven on seven camps into college. And, and they feel like, you know, they have a bigger portion of building a team, but the, I know here quite often, this is not the NBA, you know, the NFL yeah. definitely Fair has point. a stronger, ownership base and and uh you know michael bidwell he should make this decision because he's the one that's going to have to live with obviously kyler is not going to be ready going into the season that acl happened way too late and then you know so it's a lot swirling around his team 
All right, let's get to this Lovey Smith situation. I mean, listen, I know you give your game balls. I'm giving a game ball to Lovey Smith. He pretty much knew he was going to get fired. Screw the friggin' Texans and the brass. We're going for two. We're going to shit chat a luck out of a top draft pick. Oh, by the way, it goes to my former team, the Bears. But I, I just, something doesn't sit right with me with this firing. And I know he accepted the job and he went in and he understood these are the circumstances. But also, to be fair, I think he was trying to just stop the bleeding a little bit, like playing the good soldier. And now he becomes collateral damage. I, I think it's a pretty piss poor look by the Texans. Yeah, you know, another rudderless team. You know, it, 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 they just have not been the same since their, their first owner, uh, McNair, died a couple of years ago. And now his, his son, Cal, is in charge of the team. And, you know, I'm hearing Nick Casario, the general manager there, he's probably not coming back. And, and you know, you talk about stopping the bleeding. I really think that hiring a lovely Smith had a lot to do with the Brian Flores situation. If you remember that lawsuit, all that came out right around that time. And they said, oh, man, we better figure out what we need to do here because they were going to hand that job to Josh McCown, <laughs> a guy who had no NFL experience, a former backup quarterback. And that was uh, the owner's handpicked guy. And, you know, you see how that worked out with Jeff Saturday with Indianapolis Colts and you know, Lovey Smith did a good, you know, playing a good soldier as well as David Culley last year, both one and done coaches. And uh, you would hope that they would build towards the future. Uh, they'll have their second, second overall pick. Now, as you were saying, the Bears get the first pick. They'll have the second pick and they got to get a quarterback and rebuild this thing. But that's my point. So you mentioned the two coaches. Oh, by the way, two African-American coaches. And oh, by the way, who were one and done. If if. If the belief is, you know, be the Band-Aid, then I guess then if, if the belief is be the Band-Aid and just get us through the season, um, and he did that, right? right. He, he did what he was supposed to do, then why do you not, and it's not about rewarding, but it's almost as though, I, I don't know how to, I don't know the words I'm trying to look for. Like, right. I, and, yeah. And I get it. You know, Q, they gave him a three year deal, I think three to four year deal for a reason. And that's how long every coach needs, whether, you know, what their background, ethnicity or anything, they all need probably three years to institute their plan, get the players that they want, clean up shop. And, you know, they were a mess to begin with. We talked about the whole Deshaun Watson thing. And that just never got cleaned up going into the season with David Culley. And then it just kind of rolled into, yeah, Lovey Smith. They traded him, but Lovey Smith got a roster that was very depleted. You know, they, they trade Hopkins as he can, couldn't, couldn't get along with the brass as well. So, you know, it was a bad situation for him. And unfortunately, a lot of these coaches, they just want an opportunity and, and they take it, but it may not be the best situation for them. Yeah. It, it, okay. That's my point. I just had this conversation. Um, there's 32 of these jobs available. So let's just say um, a guy like uh, D'Amico Ryans. What, why would, you're going to interview, but if you're offered the job, don't you also have to believe in the back of your mind? All right, shit, if I don't turn this around in a year, I'm going to be out of a job. Yeah. And, and, you know, these coaches, they're competitive. They think they can get it done with their game plan and everything they've done over the years. And a lot of these guys um, are longtime assistants who, who just would cherish the opportunity to find be that, that leader in the front of the room and, and an owner to handpick them. So they're going to take their opportunities. But when you do see a Steve Wilkes, who was with the Cardinals one year, veteran guy, very respected around the league. He, he only got one year with the Cardinals and then he's out and, you know, he did a pretty good job this year with the uh, Carolina Panthers Carolina. as an interim coach. So, you know, they sent out a memo. I don't know if you heard that a couple of weeks ago. The NFL was like, uh, they didn't like that teams are paying guys that really aren't coaching anymore. You know what I mean? The, the firing cycle, not getting to my three Stop years. But these, owners, these owners are going to do what they want to do, you know, and. You know, you saw it in Denver this year. They had a new regime. The Walton group comes in there, and and they did not like what Nathaniel Hackett was producing on the field, and they said, you know what, enough's enough. So, you know, they're going to make these decisions, but they actually have to pay out this money on these contracts, these coaches. Um, I got hammered <clears throat> on social media. I posted a short. Uh, it's well over, like, 
2,500, 3,000 views on Aaron Rodgers because I'm so tired of this. You know, he's an all-time great. We've established that. I don't need to hear the crap anymore about thrower of the football and pushing it down. Stop. He can throw a great football. We know that. Um, he's a unbelievable quarterback. The stats are there, the pedigree. Uh, but at the end of the day, whether playoffs or big spot, i.e. Sunday night, in a game at home against the Lions, all due respect to the Lions, the Packers should have beat them and won that game. He throws a horrible pick with around three and change. He barely cracks 200 yards and they barely crack 16 points and you lose the game and you're bounced out of playoff contention. So my whole theme of that was that he's an all-time great, but he's an all-time great choker. Like I can't recall a quarterback who has put together a hall of fame career that has had some of his worst moments in the biggest spots, whether it's the playoffs, whether it's NFC championships games, one and four, whether it's debacle against uh, Arizona, where the ball kicked up in the air, losing to them twice, losing to San Francisco, losing to Tampa Bay when it was all set up. And people are hammering me like, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. To me, it's not debatable. Like when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, it's taboo to say, but this guy chokes. He chokes in a big spot. Yeah, I, I saw a meme online. It was another home loss for the Packers that knocks them out, whether it's the playoffs or the last game of the season. And they did a nice job getting back into the race, but you're right. That was their opportunity. They had the win and get in scenario against Alliance, a team they were heavy favorites at. The game's in Lambeau. It's at home. And then they, they lay that egg. You know, they lose 20 to 16. He throws for 205 yards. Yes, he's always complaining about the rookies like Dobbs dropping that big play pass or all that, but he's just not the same guy that he was. You know, I, I think they won a Super Bowl in 2010 or 2011, that's and that's a long time ago. And and yes, he he puts up a lot of regular season wins. You know, we talked about the uh, three years in a row where Lafleur and he came in and they had you know three 13 win seasons in a row. But you know, when you're at home and you're playing an underdog team, you got to step on our throat, and that's the way he was in the past. I, he's 38 now going on 39 you wonder you know does he have the heart to jump back in and I, he keeps talking about it. every year he's got to make a decision whether he, he really wants to do this or not and and there's been whispers around at least some guys that I've talked to that he's not doing the work that he needs to in in, in the offseason you know that he did in the past so you know it's going to be an interesting offseason to see if they switch over to Jordan Love or not 2010 they won the Super Bowl 2011, they were 15 and one, and the Giants went in there and they beat them in the playoffs. Okay, uh, they went to nine straight um, playoff appearances, and I think we lost Lloyd. We'll punch him back up. They went through nine straight, uh, or not nine straight, but they made the playoffs um, nine times, and they didn't even sniff uh, the Super Bowl to Lloyd's point. So, I mean, look, I, I don't know. This is just me. This is where I'm at with Aaron Rodgers. And to Lloyd's point, I have no idea what he's going to decide to do at the end of the day, but he might turn around and he might just basically uh, call it a career. You just don't know. You don't know how it's going to play out when it comes to that. All right, what we'll do is we'll take a timeout. We'll punch back up Lloyd. We'll continue the show and we'll get our last picks in. Uh, we'll get his thoughts on some of these games. Playoff time right around the corner. Uh, all right, you know what? We punched him back up again. So this is why we, I'm telling you right now, you will be banned from the show if you touch that, if you touch your screen one more time. Yeah, yeah, Q, Q, it, someone was calling me. You know what I mean? Tell them. Tell them. They know the they studio, locked it in. Man. I was about to take a time out and do my live reads, but forget about it. Um, so where I was saying is that nine playoffs after that appearances, they haven't even gotten back to the Super Bowl and and I I agree with you. I I think I think that might be it. And how about the irony, right? His last pass, a pick. Brett Favre's last pass in Green Bay with the Packers, a pick. So um, I don't know, man. I just I always think it's taboo. We're not allowed to get on Aaron Rodgers, but we can get on these other quarterbacks. No, you know, and, and he like all all these guys, they you know they. You know, they age and, and you know, you, you have to put the work in, but eventually you got to step away from it. And maybe yeah. it's his time to, you know, everybody talks about Tom Brady and longevity, but nobody's going to, 
you're not going to see a guy like Tom Brady played at his 46 and he's, he's 38, almost 39. And you look at Matt Ryan, he's around that same age and uh, it's time for him to walk away too. All right. A couple minutes. Let's hit these games for wild card weekend. Uh, so you got two on Saturday, Seattle 49ers, third meeting of the season. Uh, 49ers are beating them twice. They're laying nine and a half, but they go in with a young quarterback in Purdy. And then you got a veteran team in uh, P. Carroll and Seattle, who, oh, by the way, backdoored everyone because of the Lions beating Green Bay. Um, I think that line's a little too rich for my blood at nine and a half. I still like the Niners to win the game outright. Yeah, Q, you know, I, I probably would say get take the nine and a half and, and, and go with Seattle. But in terms of outright, I, I just think that this San Francisco on such a roll there on a, a, like a 10 game winning streak. Purdy seems getting more comfortable back there. Uh, they get Mitchell back in the backfield as well as Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel. I mean, I could go on and on about the weapons that they have. And, and also it starts up front with Trent Williams. So offensively, uh, they're producing in terms of the Niners and using all the weapons. And defensively, Bosa in that group, we talk about him all the time being potential defensive player of the year. He's going to force Geno Smith to make some mistakes. He got away with some mistakes in that game where they won in overtime against the Rams. But uh, I do see that the Niners win this game. And, and uh, they've already beaten twice, as you said, week 16. They beat him 21-13, and then they beat him all the way back at week two. So I, I think this trend continues. Any concern that they are coming in with a big time winning streak of 10? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's going to be their home. So I, I think their home crowd will pick them up and, and they'll be ready to roll. Shanahan is a pretty good game plan and coach. And uh, th this is their big opportunity. Now, Purdy, you know, you never know when a rookie's going to rear his head because he, he, don't forget, he is a rookie and no rookie has ever made the Super Bowl. So it, it's going to be fun to see if he can get this done or not. Yeah. You like that. I know you like that stat. Uh, the Chargers and uh, Chargers and Jacksonville right now, it's sitting out of pick them. Jacksonville's at home. Didn't play their best game against Tennessee. Made the plays when they had to. That kid for Tennessee, that young quarterback. Um, uh, well, I shouldn't really say young, but a journeyman quarterback somewhat put in a bad spot. That's a bad loss by Tennessee. But you got a veteran coach in Doug. You got Ingram's playing well. ETN's playing well. Defense has a little chip on their shoulder. Trevor Lawrence looks very comfortable. I, I don't know, man. In this situation, I would say, give me the coach who's at home with the playoff experience. I picked the Chargers to go to the Super Bowl. I have to stay with that pick. But I feel as though there's something off about this team. I don't know if it's soft. I don't know if it's just they can't put it all together for 60 if they're getting set to kind of um, disappoint again, and then they're going to make the decision to fire the head coach. I like to believe it's a complete opposite, and that doesn't happen. Uh, part of me kind of wants to lean towards Jacksonville at home, playing with house money. You know, you know, Doug's going to be aggressive, and they right now, and they come in. It seems as though the healthier team too. Yeah, this is an interesting one, Q. Because all the games are rematches. So the last time these two teams played, it uh, it was back in Week Three, and Jacksonville yeah. was. 38 to 10. That's what they put on them. So, and, and Jacksonville, one of the hottest teams out there going to the playoffs, they've won five straight games. And, and Trevor Lawrence, you're looking very comfortable back there, like a real field general and ATN as well, making a lot of big plays. Christian Kirk, a guy who a lot of people question coming in the season, doing a great job. And then Jenkins, that defensive back, is just incredible. He's making plays all over all over the field for that defense. So it's going to be interesting. And, and I kind of agree with you, Justin Herbert. This is his opportunity to step up and show everybody, can he be the man? And, and let's not forget, something is amiss with this team. I don't know. Brandon Slater was kind of on a hot sleep. Uh, their coach there, and, and you just wonder, can he get it done? They have a lot of injuries. Uh, Mike Williams hurt his back again. And Bosa may re-aggravated re uh, a groin injury. So I, I'm, I'm going to say go with Jacksonville. So it, it, it should be an interesting game, maybe a tight one, but I think this is Trevor Lawrence's moment. All right. Three on Sunday. I still haven't made my official pick on the Giants and the Vikings. Um, but yeah, Miami and Buffalo. Buffalo's laying nine and a half. Uh, we saw what they did to New England. We saw their special teams obviously come alive, even though at times Allen just throws a bad pick. But you don't know who's going to be quarterbacking for Miami. Yeah, I mean, we, we just don't know if it's going to be that kid Thompson uh, or if it's going to be Tua. And, and Buffalo, just they strike me as a team right now, line be damned, odds be damned, that they're on a mission. And I can actually see them waxing Miami. 
I can yeah, see this a 34 to 17 type of game. And I tend to agree with you. You know, a lot of motion in the building. You know, Tamar Hamlin has come back to Buffalo and, and the team really rallied around him. You talked about Naheem Hines and those two big kickoff returns. And then, you know, it, it this team just has a lot of momentum behind him. Josh Allen, as long as he protects that football, you know, he's going to run it a lot. They're, yeah. they're going to run him. They're going to use Moss. They're going to use Singletary, but he's going to be the cog to that whole offense. He's going to get the ball down the field uh, to Diggs and the rest of those guys. So I, I think Buffalo is going to roll on them. Miami, I'm hearing that Tua is not cleared to concussion protocol yet. He's not even practicing. Uh, it's not looking good. And, and Teddy Bridgewater has the knee and a finger injury as well from last week. So it may be Skylar Thompson and, and He's another late round quarterback, but he's not Purdy. He's, you know, he's not going to get it done. And I tend to agree with you that they'll cover that nine and a half in Buffalo rule. And the line goes up tomorrow. Then we'll kind of know where we're at with the quarterback position. Um, I'll give you a 30 quick on the Giants and the Vikings, Minnesota laying three at home. Yeah, you know, can Kirk Cousins finally do it? I know it's not a primetime game, but. It, Q, this is very interesting, you know, because Leonard Leonard Williams and, and Wake Martindale, that defensive coordinator, have done a great job for the Giants in terms of dialing up pressure. So you, you saw that, and, and they got a lot of key turnovers in, in the game that put them into the playoffs. And, and Kirk Cousins cannot make mistakes. And, and Dalvin Cook, you know, you wonder, is he a little beat up at this point in the season? But the key is going to be, can they cover Richard Jefferson? He's a guy that's just a dynamic player and – well, I've been back and forth on, on this one. I think Saquon is definitely going to have a big game as well. So, you know, it, I'll go with the home team here in a very close game. Uh, they, they've had so many close wins this season. I think they win once again on a field goal. So I'd probably say take that, those points, you know, and, and the Giants will barely win it, but I think it's a field goal win for the Vikings. Uh, that's just that's just heartbreaking. Thank you. Um, remind me not to have you on anymore. Ravens and Cincinnati. Cincinnati is laying the touch at home. This is another team, right? We don't know what's going on with Baltimore in the quarterback position health-wise with Jackson. Cincinnati, Cincinnati to me is just, they're a freight train right now, man. I, I, I just love what Cincinnati's doing. Um, I, you know, the familiarity, right? We just saw you the other day. So, yeah. you know, this is where we're at. Um, I like Cincinnati in this spot, and I, I, I believe they're going to cover. Yeah, Q, you know, week five is a long time away, and that's what Baltimore beat Cincinnati, and, and you know, they, they were rolling in that game, and Lamar had a pretty good win out there. But you talk about week 18, Cincinnati 27, uh, Baltimore 16, it, it, they ju you just saw the disparity between these two teams. And, and especially with Lamar Jackson, if he does play, that knee is still very beat up. And, and is he going to be the same guy? I, I know Dobbins is beat up as well. Uh, can he run the football? And then their receiving core is so nondescript. Who is going to really make plays out there? And you talk about the Bengals and Joe Burrow and all his weapons, including Jamar Chase. They're just rolling right now. So I do expect them to win this game at home and continue moving forward and set up a really nice divisional round battle in the future. And, and we'll, we'll see how they do in that one, but I think they do cover seven. All right. Then the capper Monday night, Dallas uh, laying two and a half on the road against Tom Brady and the bucks. Dak has not played well. They're leaking a substantial amount of oil. And then all of a sudden Evans and Brady are back, right? They're on the same page. I mean, this might be Brady's kind of swan song, so to speak. I can't trust Dallas. I can't trust McCarthy until otherwise proven wrong. I'll tell you right now, I'm going on the record, Tom Brady, the Bucks at home. Yeah, Q, you know, beware the home dog. And now you're really poking the bear in, in Tom Brady. Yeah, you, yes, I know they lost this week in a game they really didn't care about, but he's going to be ready to roll. And, and I think he's going to put up some big numbers. And, and you know, I take that two and a half in the home team. And, and I think the Bucks have enough to beat the Cowboys, who we talk about Dak over and over again, you talk about a quarterback that kind of chokes, uh, you know, in the playoffs, he, he he's made a lot of mistakes. And let's not forget, uh, he led the NFL this this year in interceptions. And he, you know, he missed a lot of games, too. It still led the league in interceptions. So I look for him to turn the football over and I look for Brady to have short fields and to make some big plays to Evans and the rest of his weapons. All right. Uh, lastly, lackey and game ball to close out the regular season. 
Yeah, Q, you know, I, I talked about it earlier that there was a lot of motion in the building. Naheem Hines got my game ball. He's the kick returner for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, he took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown, and then the Patriots made the mistake of kicking it again, and he gets another one to the house, and, and it just drove the Bills and their fans to, uh, to that clinching at number two spot. Unfortunately, they, they're not going to be the number one seed like they wanted to be, but that's going to be interesting as the playoffs play through. But a very good win, and Hines wins the game ball. He is my guy who just loves oh. to touch the screen. Lloyd fans. Oh, really? at- <laughs> Yeah, real quick, our yeah. lackey was Quay. Uh, Quay uh, oh, the oh, Watkins. The, the, young, the kid from the Green young Bay. linebacker from Green Bay Packers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah well, Quay Walker. You can't <laughs> – what he did, that, and that was a huge catalyst in that game. The turning, You know, that, that penalty got it, gave him really short field and punching in, and they, they just never seemed to recover from that. The young man, Quay Walker, is playing pretty well. But, you know, you have to make him your lackey for – putting his hands on a trainer after in light of everything that happened, just stupid. You're hundred percent correct. Um, he is, um, my guy Lloyd Vance, uh, follow him on Twitter at Lloyd Vance, NFL writer, researcher, storing PFWA award winner. And of course, uh, BC F H O F selection committee. He's got, he got sticky fingers. Always. <laughs> I won't touch the screen next time. <laughs> Enjoy the playoff games, my friend. I always appreciate a couple moments. It'll be a great weekend stretched over three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We'll do it again next Tuesday. All right. Look forward to it. Thanks for having me on. All right. You got it, pal. All right. There you have it. My guy, Lloyd Vance, jumping on board for a couple minutes and he's still touching the screen, poking it. There he goes. He's good to go. <laughs> So, hey, don't forget, uh, follow him on Twitter, at RichQ on Q. If you like the content, we don't ask for much. Just share, comment, and subscribe if you You guys have been fantastic. A Tuesday edition of BYP in the books. Busy Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Also, don't forget Wednesday, 27 and Q with myself and the two-time Super Bowl champ, Brandon Jacobs. That's all on the channel, Rich Q on Q. Have a good sports night. We're going to post and load these suckers up, and we will talk to you tomorrow with our short in the AM as well. Have a good sports Tuesday, everyone. Thanks for joining us.